Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel and uh, today I thought we'd uh, take a, a little bit of a, uh, a different uh, 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 topic. Um, instead of continuing to look at the synthesizer, we're going to look at some of my visual art instead. Um, so here's a kind of gallery of, of my pieces um, and some are more developed than others. Um, some are still a work in progress. Uh, so let's get in and take a look and I think I'm going to choose this one for today's video because it's kind of simple enough that I can explain the concepts but hopefully it'll still be quite good. So um, uh, quite a good introduction to what I'm doing so I'm just going to select that. Uh, so you see that you get a piece of artwork but uh, the whole point is that it's adjustable, so there's loads of different parameters that you can change. So you really kind of like make your own artwork, except that like obviously like it's got my ideas in there as well, so it's like a collaboration. Um, so here down the bottom, if we press the dice button, it'll just generate different random ones. And uh, up here we set the parameters. Um, so. Uh, Uh, so for instance we've got this uh, uh, blue T shape off to the right so um, I might just change that by uh, maybe making that bit red and now you can see it's, it's changed in the artwork itself in fact maybe I'll delete that piece completely and maybe I'll change it to a round bit like that um, yeah so you can design your own tiles and you can add and delete um other way around add delete uh yeah so uh i'm just going to add an extra one and then i can show so you can add a piece up or down left or right and change all the colors and stuff um and then you can have the diagonals as well if you want so uh, you can have a straight line, I mean, you probably don't want it. like, like uh, too many lines, otherwise it gets distracting. Or like just, you know, not enough, enough space, enough white space. Uh, or you can have like curvy bits like that. Um, and another major aspect is so you can have it so that either the colours wherever that tile appears are like exactly as they are here. So here we've got like uh, red going up and red going up and got yellow going sideways. Or if we go into the colors, you can choose coloring. So at the moment it's on as designed. So exactly as you design the tile is as it appears. But if we go to random, now it chooses random colors, but it kind of, it flows as if it's like, like a railway line or a, a, a stitching like a weaving or something or whatever you want it to be use your imagination um, so now the colors just mean that uh, so if it's a, if it's the same color then whatever random color it, it picks it all the bits that are the same color so if I have like two red bits then wherever that occurs um, so here we've got the, the top bit is chosen purple and the bottom bit is also purple because that's also red um, and the two yellow bits, it's got green and green. Um, so that's the two kinds of colouring. Uh, so, so each one of my pieces has got like different parameters that you can modify and just like create your own artwork. Um, yeah, uh, and down here is like the kind of like the probability distribution. So if I want this one to occur like more often, then I just increase this number and it'll have like loads of them. Or I could make it like a rare one, turn it down to like one or something. Um, yeah, um, what else have I got? Uh, the minimum and maximum number of connections. So at the moment it's got, uh, it can have just, just one piece connected. So it could be connected from this side or from the other side or from the top or from the bottom. Or it could be connected for all of them, all four. So if we made the minimum four, then it will always connect and cross. Um, yeah. So here you've got. 
uh, yeah, pink and pink and yellow and yellow. Um, where else is that one? Can't find another cross. Ah, oh, down here we've got green and blue. Uh, and to make it a little bit more interesting, so you can change the line width. You can have quite thick lines, which gives a completely different aesthetic. You can have like really thin lines, uh, or you can have like different depending on whether it's a horizontal line or a vertical line, which looks like kind of like calligraphy or something. Um, yep. Uh, don't worry about the special constraints. That's a bit advanced for today's discussion. Um, and they can choose how many colors, so you can have fewer colors or more. It goes up to, yeah, you can have 15 colors plus the background as well. I'll get into backgrounds in a minute. Um, uh, oh, and the group size. So if it's on random mode, then you can choose. So at the moment, it flows. So it's like turquoise, and like wherever it's connected, it's turquoise. Um, but we could have like uh, two colors in the group, and then we need to turn down the flow probability. So at the moment, if it starts on turquoise, it's like a hundred percent that it'll continue on turquoise. But if we change that to like fifty-fifty, so you can see that orange and blue are in the same group. Um, so I think it just goes in like twos, yeah. So like red and green are in the same group, and blue and yellow. Um, and of course you can edit all the colors. Um, yes. I have just realized that I am recording with a Windows nightlight thing on. So the screen is a bit orange, but let's forget about that. Um, actually, let's not. Let's fix that now. Um, okay, I'm going to pause recording for a second. Okay, so by the magic of the internet, it is now the correct colors. Um, I don't know, it might have been recording in the correct colors anyway, but to me it was looking orange. Because um, it's the evening time where I am now. Um, so I was going to say let's make this one pink, but we've actually already got pink. Uh, well, let's change pink to something else. Um, so we've got hue, saturation, lightness. Oh, that one's kind of interesting. I mean, we've kind of already got like most of like the primary colors. Uh, well, we do have the primary colors and, and secondary colors. Um, but yeah, yeah, we could have some dark ones. Um, some desaturated ones. Anyway, or some partially transparent ones. That'd be interesting when we come to the backgrounds. Um, yeah, so that is this page on colors. Uh, and then we've got the grid. Um, so yeah, this is divided into grid cells, which we can see if I turn up the opacity a bit. So you can actually see them. If you want to do that, you might not want to do that. Um, so each one is drawn inside a cell, apart from you can see that this is actually kind of like it goes over the lines of the cell, which you can change. So if I change the top overlap, now they won't go over the top line. Or you can have them nice and rounded as it was originally. Whoa! Or you can have them like kind of spiky, like super rounded. Um, uh, so what else have we got here to show you? Uh, yeah, rows just like changes like how how dense it is, and then you can stretch them sideways. You might want more rows and fewer columns by stretching. Let's turn down the grid opacity, like really low or off, since we've demonstrated that function. Um, yeah, uh, and then gaps, I'm not sure how well that works, can sometimes like mess up the flow. But yeah, not too bad today. Um, yeah, you see when you put in lots of gaps you end up with uh, 
what I call wispy bits, these bits that aren't connected to anything, but in this case they look quite nice, but sometimes we can get too much of them, it's a bit, um, just kind of, it's not, not quite uh, what I intended. Um, and then you have these four parameters which are quite useful. So this this completely changes the game, these these four parameters as far as I'm concerned, or even just two of them. So if we move the middle one, they go all like kind of like spiky and heart shaped and stuff. So you can see if I turn up the grid opacity, and then if I turn middle all the way up, um, What am I doing here? Yeah, that is correct. Um, so let's turn the number of rows back down. Um, so you can see what it's doing if I move it. If it's in the center, then the straight lines, and if it if it's over towards the right, then then you get this kind of uh, like a, a chevron shape. Um, Yeah. Um, and obviously, if it's over to the left, then they go in like a. Go over to there. Um, and then you can move like the bottom as well, so that just that makes it kind of tilted. Um, Really, the middle and the center are the most interesting ones, and then you just fine tune with either bottom or right. Um, reset. Um, and then let's reset the middle. And this time I'm going to go for center, so it's going to do the same sort of thing in the vertical direction. Um, And yeah, you can apply a little bit of tilt if you want. And then you can turn the opacity down or off. Um, and then we need not necessarily have them like all tilting like the same way. We can actually like vary that up a bit, which is quite nice. Uh, let's reset that. Let's just use the middle one for now. Um, well, maybe a little bit of bottom just to make it less rigid. Um, so now, uh, so if I have a, a row pattern, so at the moment it's plus, so whatever I set here, so the middle is over towards the right, so they're all kind of going over towards the right. If I put in plus and minus, then it will alternate on different rows, so like this row is leaning over to the right, but then the next one's leaning over to the left. Uh, and then you can put like a zero one in the middle, so you go right, then rectangular, and then left, um, or you can even do, I think if you put in like a 5, then it'd be like 0.5. Um, minus 5 would be minus 0.5, I think. Something like that. I've forgotten exactly. Well, no, I haven't. I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Uh, I just haven't used it for a while. Uh, plus 9. Ah, uh, yeah. So plus 9 is plus 0.9, and then minus on its own is, is minus 1. So if we do plus plus 9, then it will do one that's fully to the right, one that's kind of mostly to the right, and then one to the left. So if we do, yeah plus plus five and then minus and we just kind of do yeah um oh and yeah this is just more stuff about the grid lines you can change right you make the grid lines like lighter or or darker as well as faint or, or not faint um you can make the grid lines thicker Spacing. 
Oh, so you can only mark, you can decide to mark like only every other grid line. Um, anyway, the grid lines are not the most interesting part, but they do kind of add something. Uh, and then overlap we've already covered. Um, so it's kind of rounded off bits on the end that it's controlling. Um, and so yeah, that that's pretty much the end of today's video. Just a, a short one, just to, to show off some of my other work besides synthesizers. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. And um, yeah, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, and um, leave comments and stuff. And uh, yeah, I will actually be um, selling these patterns at some point. Um, so you'll be able to get like prints or like, I don't know, mugs, postcards, things like that. And, uh, but like still retaining like the customizability. So you get like a, a 10 or a 15 minute session with me to, so that you can like create your own design. Um, so yeah, leave a comment if that's something that you're interested in and I'll uh, let you know when the shop is up and running. Um, but other than that, that's that's all for today. Um, hope you have a lovely day or, or evening, wherever you are. And um, yeah, I'll be back next time, probably with more synth stuff, we'll see. Um, yeah, that's all for now. Bye bye, thanks for listening.